Good morning and welcome to our worship. It's a joy and a privilege to be able to be with you again as we gather together to praise and worship our God. I just pray that our time together will be a blessing to each and every one of us. Our music this morning is going to be more choral than usual uh, and I hope you enjoy it. Uh, they are familiar hymns but the settings not necessarily sing-along settings so uh, I've just left them for you to be able to sit and listen and, and think about the words as we go along. But first we begin with a prayer using the words of Nick Fawcett. Great and loving God, we greet you this day with praise and wonder. We greet you as the creator of the ends of the earth, sovereign over space and time, greater than we can ever imagine. Gracious and living Christ, we greet you this day with joy and thanksgiving. We greet you as our Lord, our friend, our saviour. Mysterious and mighty spirit, we greet you this day with awe and worship. We greet you as our guide and inspiration, our source of strength and comfort, a living inner reality. Almighty God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, we greet you this day and we praise you that you are here to greet us and everyone, today and every day, here and everywhere. Help us to meet with you and grow closer to you through this time of worship. Help us to glimpse your glory and make it known through all we say and do to the glory of your name. Amen. And so we join our prayers together as we say the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen.
My Bible reading today is one of the set passages and it's from the Old Testament, uh, Genesis chapter 18 verses 1 to 15. It's called The Three Visitors. The Lord appeared to Abraham near the great trees of Mara while he was sitting at the entrance to his tent in the heat of the day. Abraham looked up and saw three men standing nearby. When he saw them, he hurried from the entrance of his tent to meet them and bowed low to the ground. He said, If I have found favour in your eyes, my Lord, do not pass your servant by. Let a little water be brought, and then you may all wash your feet and rest under this tree. Let me get you something to eat so you can be refreshed and then go on your way, now that you have come to your servant. Very well, they answered, do as you say. So Abraham hurried into the tent to Sarah. Quick, he said, get three sears of fine flour and knead it and bake some bread. Then he ran to the herd and selected a choice tender calf and gave it to a servant who hurried to prepare it. He then brought some curds and milk and the calf that had been prepared and set these before them. While they ate, he stood near them under a tree. Where is your wife Sarah? they asked him. There, in the tent, he said. Then the Lord said, I will surely return to you about this time next year, and Sarah, your wife, will have a son. Now Sarah was listening at the entrance to the tent, which was behind them. Abraham and Sarah were already old and well advanced in years, and Sarah was past the age of childbearing. So Sarah laughed to herself, and she thought, after I am worn out and my master is old, will I now have this pleasure? Then the Lord said to Abraham, Why did Sarah laugh and say, Will I really have a child now that I am old? Is anything too hard for the Lord? I will return to you at the appointed time next year and Sarah will have a son. Sarah was afraid, so she lied and said, I did not laugh. But he said, yes, you did laugh. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. That reading from Genesis is quite well known in a, in a lot of ways. The first part is the arrival of these three strangers uh, when they come to meet Abraham and Sarah. It's an image that's immortalised in the uh, icon painted by Rublev, where he pictures the three visitors as a, as a sort of an image of the Trinity. But there's no such image going on here. They are clearly messengers from God, angels if you like, although not necessarily fitting the normal description of angels. And they come to Abraham and Sarah to bring a message. That message is quite simple. They say that Sarah is going to have a baby. Now, Abraham and Sarah by this time were of a very good age. And certainly as far as Sarah was concerned, her childbearing years were long behind her. And so it's not a surprise really that when she overhears what's being said while she's in the house, she laughs to herself in verse 12. So Sarah laughed to herself, saying, After I have grown old and my husband is old, shall I have pleasure? 
But God wants to know, why did Sarah laugh? Does she think that there is something which is beyond the power of God? Something which, even for God, is impossible? And of course the answer is no. In this case, Sarah went on to have a child and the story carries on from there. Because for God, nothing is impossible, even though in our eyes it may seem that way. Sometimes I think we are like Sarah when we look at our lives when we look at our churches. We start to perhaps ask questions about our mission. Is it actually possible in this day and age to proclaim the gospel, to make a difference, to bring people to faith in God? We live in what appears to be such a, a godless society that often the task before us seems impossible. And like Sarah, we strive to be obedient. But when people talk to us about growth, about evangelism, we sort of gently chuckle to ourselves and think, well, we'll do what we can. But it's not impossible. Nothing for God is impossible. If we are willing to listen to what he has to say, to follow where he leads, and to trust him, in what he's asking us to do. Church is not shrinking everywhere. Some churches are growing. People are coming to know the Lord as their saviour. They're coming to a real faith in Christ and becoming part of churches up and down the country, even here in Cockermouth. We have churches that are successful and are growing because they don't believe that it's impossible and they have followed where God has led them. The question is, are we prepared to do the things that we need to in order to become successful churches, to become growing churches? Are we willing to begin to let go of some of those inherited things that are part of church, but not necessarily part of the gospel? When I was growing up in the 70s, things were changing so quickly. I can look back over my lifetime now and see how much the world and society has changed. I grew up, grew up on a street where only one person had a car. Only a couple of people had telephones at home. I never dreamed of a mobile phone or the internet or a man walking on the moon. I never dreamed that cars would become such common things, that the world would become such a small place, that TVs would grow from the little 20 inch black and white screen that sat in the corner of my lounge as a child to the huge colour plastic panels that we have in our homes now. 
Things have changed. People have changed. The gospel hasn't changed. That remains the same. The gospel was good news for generations in years gone by. It's relevant to these, this generation today. And it's relevant for generations to come. The question is not, is the gospel relevant? But is the way in which we communicate the gospel still relevant? When we start to look at what the new normal might be, what are we prepared to let go? How are we prepared to change? Are we willing to go down that road? It's all too easy to be like Sarah, to just sit and chuckle to ourselves and say, well, it's good to talk about it, but it's never going to happen. If we want our churches to survive, it must happen. If we want people to come to know the love of our Lord Jesus, it must happen. And we must start those conversations now. That we can reach out into the world and into this generation with the good news. Amen. come to our prayers for others and for ourselves. So let us pray. Mighty God, you are a very present help in all our troubles. Remembering that nothing is too hard for you, Lord, we put our trust in you. Teach us your ways, O Lord, and show us your paths. Guide your church 
that it may lead others to behold your love and glory. We pray for peace and tolerance in our communities and around the globe, Lord, for an end to hate and discrimination, that we may act justly, love mercy and walk humbly with our God. Help us to embrace the commandment to love our neighbour as ourselves. We continue to pray for all who are refugees, who've been driven out of their homes by war, injustice or violence. For those who continue to live in refugee camps, also combating the coronavirus, still waiting to find a place of sanctuary. As we approach the end of Carers Week, we remember, Lord, that you loved and cared throughout your life. We pray for all carers, remembering that some of them are even children. In their devoted and demanding ministry, when exhaustion overwhelms, renew them with your strength. When patience is tested, grant them your endurance. Shed your light and bring your peace, surrounding and supporting always. On the 77th anniversary of Methodist Homes for the Aged, we pray, God of love and hope, of encouragement and challenge. We thank you for the work of Methodist Home for the Aged. And we ask you to bless those who live in their homes, schemes and communities, and those who care for them. We thank you for those whose vision and research enable new ways of caring for those in the organisation, who direct and manage, and for those who support this work with prayer and by raising funds. We acknowledge our need of one another, and ask you grant your gifts of wisdom and understanding that the love of Christ may be shown in all they do. As lockdown continues to be lifted, we pray for common sense to prevail and that we resist apathy. We pray for wisdom for our schools and colleges who continue to make important decisions school children and students anxious about their education and exams and we pray for continued strength for all those who work in care homes and in our hospitals and for all key workers god of vision you hold all things in the palm of your hands as we look ahead to the future show us how this experience can help to shape our communities, our attitudes, our churches and our mission. Lord, it says in your word, are not five sparrows sold for two pennies, yet not one of them is forgotten by God. Compassionate God, we pray for those who are struggling at this time, all who are finding life hard and the outlook bleak, those who are sick, anxious or lonely. We pause for a moment to remember those known to us in need of prayer at this time. Lord, you are our strength in times of weakness. You are our hope in times of darkness. You promise never to leave us or forsake us. And so we ask that you will be everything to them that they need you to be at this time. And so, Lord, we offer all our prayers to you in faith, for we know we can put our hope in you for you are our protector and our shield. 
and in Christ's name we pray. Amen.
Well, thank you for joining us once again today for our time of worship. And I hope that you have found something in there that has been a blessing to you. If you want to join with us regularly, then don't forget to subscribe using the button at the bottom of the Facebook page. And if you want to be notified when we put a new video up, click the little bell icon that comes up next to it. And if this has been a blessing to you, why not share it with others? It's so easy to access in these modern times. YouTube is available on telephones, on tablets, on computers, and even on a lot of modern TVs, you'll find a, a YouTube channel. So why not share the good news of Jesus with your neighbours and your friends and tell them where they can find our online worship. But in the meantime, we ask God's blessing upon us as we go. May the blessing of God, the Father, Son and the Holy Spirit be with each one of us wherever we are and bless us because we ask it in the name of Jesus. Amen.